welcome back. I am thrilled to introduce our next session, which is AI inside of the Microsoft Power Platform. But hold on, guys, onto your seats because we are about to witness something that is extraordinary, right, David? Yes, ma'am. So let's <laughs> thank you. So let's watch David transform a humble Excel into a dataverse schema. And I believe this isn't just a regular data conversation. It's like um, watching a caterpillar turn into a butterfly, right, David? But indeed. Yeah, but there is more to that. With just a few clicks, uh, the schema blossoms into a fully functional low-code application. All thanks in uh, all thanks to the power of artificial intelligence and the Maker Portal. Welcome, David Patrick, and the stage is yours. Awesome. Thank you so much. So welcome, everyone. Uh, as I mentioned, this is my talk, AI Inside the Microsoft Power Platform. My name is Dave Patrick. I'm a Microsoft Certified Trainer, Certified Solution Developer, Solutions Expert, MVP. I've got the Microsoft Certified Professional Developer, Enterprise Application Developer Certification, otherwise known as MCP Dead. <laughs> you can find out more about me on LinkedIn. Check out my company, DSA Inc. We're always looking for great people to hire. I also have a user group, Mad SharePoint, that is virtual. So anyone from anywhere in the world can join us monthly to talk about things like SharePoint. So my talk today is what about, what is AI? And we teased a little bit about one of the demos, the bringing Excel into Dataverse, but there's so much more. So I, what I want you to walk away from in this talk is to understand what Microsoft offers from the AI standpoint, be able to understand what it is, what it can do, and why you would want to use it. So let's jump right in. So the first thing I like to talk about is the obvious. People think AI is just, you know, it's an advanced uh, uh, if-then-else statement, right? And true, that's where its roots come from, right? It is advanced computer logic, but it is way more than that. And for any of the uh, the folks out there that have seen the Scooby-Doo cartoon, that's where this is from. We've unmasked the villain that is AI and realized there is computational algorithms underneath. In fact, let's jump into it. So what is AI? Microsoft's got a great uh, definition up on their learn.microsoft.com that talks about AI being this capability of a computer to imitate a human intelligence, right? The idea is that computers can analyze images like we do, they can understand speech like we do, they can interact in natural ways and even make predictions. Um, so beyond that, we have a subset of AI called machine learning. And that's specifically when we tell machines to get better or improve at the tests that they're doing. So, and then you can take that a, a step further in the subject that's known as deep learning, where the machine learns to train itself. So that's uh, that's the real, you know, the, the the goal of hey, one thing it's one thing to teach the the computer and have get results, and it's another thing to give it to just kind of to, to make that loop, and it's the third thing to just tell it off on its own. I for anyone that uh, remembers the old movie from 1983, War Games. 83, we were talking about it. That one had, featured a computer that literally learned how to get better at, at, at different tasks. And that is really what AI is all about. So there's a couple of different concepts to be uh, familiar with. Algorithms, the sequence of calculations and rules used to solve a problem or analyze a set of data. The machine learning that we just talked about, being able to learn from its previous experiences and deep learning where it learns all, all on its own. Microsoft's got a great site dedicated to AI. Anyone that uh, attended the virtual Ignite conference realized that Microsoft is all in on AI. They called it the biggest thing since the internet, the biggest thing since uh, mobile PCs, the biggest thing since even when the PC came out. They are all in on that. They talk about different things you can do with AI, um, you know, automating tasks that you know that you, no one wants to, you know, if I've already got this data schema set in an Excel spreadsheet, I don't want to have to re-enter that into Dataverse. So AI can help look at what's out there and redo that for me and automate those mundane tasks. Um, you can point it at things like security threats and actually uncover security threats using AI and respond to those threats faster. You can become more productive at work. Microsoft Copilot is out now and you can use that to generate PowerPoints or generate emails for you so you can become even faster. You don't have to worry about the little details. You just fill in the good stuff. You can even use AI to code in dozens of languages. Um, you can have it generate SQL. You can have it generate uh, uh, Python. So all sorts of languages, um, not to mention the languages that you prompt AI with. So you can also speak you know, in English, German, all sorts of different languages that AI is starting to understand to get those answers to your most challenging questions. So AI is everywhere. Everyone's uh, um, investing in it, not just Microsoft, all sorts of other companies. Um, they're, they're still focused on fairness and making sure that AI is responsible and ethical. Um, at, at least 50% of organizations have participated in AI. So let's give you some examples. Uh, Ernest & Young, 
they spent, they saved over 250,000 man hours of more manual work by automating processes and improving operational efficiency. PepsiCo got three times faster with, with their models in a production environment. So they got their product out there faster using AI. Progressive Insurance used AI to, to identify and optimize for their customers better opportunities and, and, and helped with the user experience. Customer service saved $10 million using AI. So again, these are real world companies doing real work with AI to save money and improve things. Microsoft has made AI part of its intelligent data platform. Azure AI is the name that they've given it. And the way it works is it's built in everywhere, right? So whether you're using Microsoft 365, Dynamics, Edge, Bing, uh, the Power Platform, we're going to look at some examples of using AI and Power BI, Power Apps, Power Automate, bringing that Excel spreadsheet in and turn it into a table. We'll look at chatbots with Power Virtual Agents. And then this, this is sort of aimed, this top layer is aimed at the citizen developer, the power users, the business users, the low code market. But there's also opportunities for the developers like myself to build their own co-pilots, to build their own, uh, to add and extend the, the uh, uh, large language models and, and, and the, 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 the bot services and cognitive services. So you can create your own co-pilot. You can create your own chat GPT, if you will, using some of the services that are available from Azure AI. So that's, that's targeted towards the developers and the data scientists these tools make it available to build your own so let's let's dig into that a little bit what are some of these tools that we can access um again they're accessible repeatable trusted all that's built into the azure ai um you can you can deploy these on premises they don't have to be uh, uh, kept in the cloud uh, microsoft at ignite uh, talked about some of the the tools uh, like uh, ml.net for .NET developers there's a lot of tools that you can build your own uh, you know, image recognition engine all inside your your network. You don't have to go necessarily go out to the cloud, but it's also all the cloud-based services. One of those cloud-based services I'd like to look at is the cognitive service for language, which is allows me to build a chatbot. Um, one thing about this is that uh, it's great. It's cloud-based service. It provides natural language processing, just like ChatGPT. So I can, I can, you know, I can say, hey, uh, I, I want to throw away an email, and it'll know that I meant delete the email. Or I could say, what's the weather, and it'll know I'm asking about, you know, the weather. It might prompt me for a zip code or something like that. It's accessible using any web-based technologies, REST APIs, client libraries, things like that. The, the reason I giggled is because at Ignite, Microsoft, Microsoft recently renamed a bunch of these things uh, as they like to do. And so where before it was cognitive language uh, service under Azure, it's now the A Azure AI language. So a little bit of naming changing, oh, that's okay. We, we, we understand that happens sometimes, um, but you can still find it there under Azure, the AI language there. When you go there, you'll still find, get started with Azure cognitive services language. So it's part of that umbrella of the AI language under Azure. What are some of the things you can do? You can uh, build a bot to answer questions. You can um, do custom question answering. You can build languages that understand uh, uh, intentions or intents where, where people know, like throw away an email. That's an intention that you can understand. You can understand the entities in that intention, like email, the nouns. So I find that the best way to understand this is to, to look at it, get the hands on. And luckily, Microsoft has great uh, quick start tutorial is part of the learn.microsoft.com website that allow us to play with some of these things and understand by doing. So here's a quick uh, a demo of going into the language studio and creating a new language that we can use to enable a bot. So literally you log into Azure and I'm using my student subscription. So for the students out there, I know we're part of the student track. You can sign up for an Azure student subscription for free. It gives you $100 in Azure credit for 12 months. So the whole semester, you know, for two semesters, and it's renewable. So throughout your whole college career, you can renew this and get the free access to Azure. It includes the $100 in credit as well as access to free services. So I'm using that now. I went into the Azure portal and I said, hey, I want to create a new language. I'm provisioning a resource. I tell it which subscription I want to build that to. I use a resource group to, con to contain all the resources that are associated with this particular resource, the language resource. I give it a name. Uh, I select a pricing tier. The pricing tier, you get one free. So I, I selected the free one. So that doesn't even use my credit. And then if I want additional ones, they cost, they will actually use my credit. But the free one is 5,000 
transactions every 30 days. So once I've selected all that, I agree to the responsible AI notice. I can look at some of the other selections about how, how I want this available in networks, what identity I wanted to use, any tags I want to associate it with it. But once I've selected, this is all very low code. You know, I'm just filling in the blanks for this template. And once I've validated that I've selected all uh, valid values, I can go ahead and create this language resource. And I'm just going to speed through this just a little bit for sake of time. And you'll see it, it, it creates that. It deploys this language. Uh, once this is deployed, then I can utilize it, right? I can do things like train it, and then I can test the deployment of the, the, the language. So we'll come through here. And this is just, again, it takes a few minutes to deploy. Um, once it's out there and deployed, we will go ahead and access it. So there it is. And there's some of those. So you can see I got a key vault. I got application insights. I got the Azure AI service itself. There's a lot of different pieces that become part, that support that language that I um, that I uh, uh, deployed there. So now I'm going and I'm selecting that resource that's deployed that language. I call it language, language demo two. And I can create a project based on that. And what a project is, the tutorial walks you through it. It's the schema for this language. You know, what, what entities, what nouns are you going to understand? What intents do you need? And luckily, it gives us a sample uh, project file. It's a JSON file that explains, and this one, uh, again, an email app demo. So it has all the schema associated with working with emails, how to uh, delete an email, uh, um, er erase an email, those kind of things. So there, there you can see there's the email app demo JSON file. So once I download that and use that, I, the next step, and I'm just going to jump over to my live demo if I can. The next step is to go out there in this quick start tutorial is to train your model. So you go through and it's it's a very quick, uh, hey, here's the model I deployed. I wanted to do standard training, which is free. You, you sometimes will split it up. Let's see if I can make this a little bit bigger. You will split it up into how much data do I want to use for training? How much do I want to use for testing? And a very standard uh, breakdown is 80% for training, 20% for testing. So if you've got 100 records, 80 of those would be to train your model, and the 20 will, will be to validate, hey, is it doing what it's supposed to be doing? So once you do the training, then you deploy your model, you go, hey, make it, make it out there, make it available. And finally, um, after you deploy it, you can test it. So let's, let's look at the testing of this. I've already done this. I'm like Martha Stewart. I went out and baked it already. So let's go and see the model out there. So let's see. I think I put it out here. There's our demo. Yeah, here we are in my testing my deployment. So I've gone to this particular deployment. I'm testing it. And now I can do things like, hey, if I tell it to garbage that email. By the way, garbage was not a word in the training, right? I, I when, If you look through that uh, sample project, you'll see words like uh, delete, uh, uh, cancel, but garbage, it had to figure it out. But through the training, it figured out that garbage, it has 91% uh, confidence that that means to delete the email. And obviously, if I put delete that email, uh, that one's a pretty easy one. That one, that one, I might as well, um, I, I would expect it to be almost 100%. And it, it's pretty confident that delete the email means to delete the email. But what if I do something like blow up that email? Hello, David. Hello. Yeah. Apologies. We can see a JSON file. I don't know whether that's what you want to share. You're sharing the wrong screen, possibly. You you, you see, I'm, sh I'm showing my testing deployment. You see that? We can see the email demo.json file. Yep, that's what I'm showing. That's exactly awesome. what I want to show. Awesome, awesome. Continue. Right, sure, right. sure. So, yeah, just, just to finish this up, you know, as I put in different intentions, you can see it, it has a, a, a lower level of confidence. But the idea was that this, this uh, uh, deployment was trained and then... Um, understood different intentions, different different words. All right, let's move on. So you can also create chatbots in Teams. Uh, if you work with Teams, uh, this is a much more low code experience. And again, Microsoft Learn's got a great uh, tutorial that walks you through creating and deleting Power Virtual Agents. Again, Microsoft at Ignite renamed this. So instead of Power Virtual Agents, it's now Microsoft Copilot Studio. So it's a lot of lot to keep track of the different naming conventions. Um, Again, I'm a little surprised that they did that, but that's okay. I've got a great demo. I'll actually post this up. Uh, this is a shorter version of my talk, so I'll post this demo up next time, but it walks you through um, creating that chatbot um, in, in real time, the, the steps. And again, the, the tutorial in those steps uh, is, is a uh, pretty easy to follow to create your first chatbot inside of Teams. 
Some other resources that Microsoft makes available, I saw uh, right before my, my talk started, they mentioned the generative AI on GitHub. There's actually an immersion workshop in Azure AI that you can use to walk through and build some of these resources that I just showed you how to do. Um, some other resources in the Microsoft platform that you should be aware of, AI Builder, which is part of Power Apps. So what this does is again, it, uh, geared towards the low-code folks, makes it easy to create, easy to connect, easy to extend. Things like your Power Automate flows, your Power Apps. So anything in the in the in the uh, Power platform can do AI very easily without any code. And this is just some examples of some of the things you can do. You can do things like category classification. You know, I've got a bunch of text, and well, this text is for HR, and this text is for IT or forms processing, where I want to I read a receipt and pull out the the details of how much was this expense. Object detection, actually, you know, looking, hey, this is a set of keys or this is a flower. Prediction, entity extraction, all that can be done with no code using AI Builder inside Power Platform. Really powerful stuff. And this is just you know some of the templates. They even give you templates to get started. So if you want to do a, a flow and use a Power Builder or AI Builder, there's a Teams template that automatically walks you through. You know, this is analyzing emails, whether it's a good email or a bad email, email sentiment um, with AI Builder. Send the results to a team or analyzing tech articles tech articles with AI Builder and send those results to the team. So you can see each of the pieces and parts, if you're not familiar with uh, building flows in Power Automate, these templates help you to get started. Just to have to fill in the blanks when you select one of these templates. Another tool. So this talk talks about a bunch of different tools in the Microsoft platform. Another one is Designer. People have been playing with this left and right. It basically is the front end to Dally. So if you want to build an Instagram post about your cosmetic product that's going to launch on March 1st, you simply tell it in, in words what you want, and it generates a creative image with some text. Uh, people have been using this. If anyone's on uh, Twitter or the you know x.com, uh, people have been posting little little uh, uh, images of themselves. They're, they're taking their, you know, they're making avatars out of their faces by describing what they look like. So it's a really neat tool to generate images um, using AI. Another one is Bing AI. So uh, basically the front end of chat GPT, you can go to Bing AI and you can chat with it. You can do things like, um, you know, give me a, a list of hobbies I want to pursue, help me plan my lunches, all sorts of cool stuff. Now, again, Microsoft decided to rename this. <laughs> but the enterprise version of this is now called Copilot. So, and it's got a brand new website, copilot.microsoft.com. So this is the new Bing AI enterprise. Yay, Microsoft. So they, they, they love to rename things, um, but it's still the Bing AI. So you can go in there, you can choose how you want to converse with it, whether you want it to be more creative or more precise, or maybe uh, you know somewhere in the middle. You can do things like, hey, I want the uh, three course menu with no nuts and no seafood, and it'll generate, just like ChatGPT, uh, whatever you ask it for. Um, my, it remembers your conversation. So if you say, I have sweet potato already, it remembers you already asked for a menu, and it'll, it'll, it'll reiterate. You know, I tried it myself. I said, hey, uh, I'm, I've been eating peanut butter and almond butter. Which one's better? And it gives me some information about that. And then I said, well, well specifically, I'm interested in fiber. And it tells me that uh, almond butter has one and a half times or 1.6 times more than peanut butter. So it's really amazing what uh, with the, uh, with the Bing AI chat can do as far as conversing with it. Another example of some of the things that it can do is generate code. I mentioned this in the beginning. So I said, hey, I want a, a T-SQL, I want the transact SQL code for Microsoft SQL Server to generate a table. Right now we're starting to get in that data realm. If I, if I needed to generate a table and I, I know I want it to have what? Um, players' names, teams, goals. Um, what can it do? Can it do that for me? Absolutely. Here it went and generated. This is this is a accurate T SQL code. Create tables, players, and it defined you know varchar fifty not null team name not null. So these are required fields. Goals. Create the primary key. That's important when you're de designing uh, databases and you want to make sure they're in third normal form. Um, this is great, but you know what? What if this was in uh, Oracle? What if I had to use a different database? Well, guess what? Still can do it. So here I, I said, you know what? I changed my mind. And now I want PL SQL, which is Oracle's uh, version of SQL. So you'll notice that the, the, the SQL that it generates now is different because it's PL SQL, not T SQL. It uses Varchar 2 instead of Varchar. But again, the AI is smart enough to recognize what I'm asking for and generate exactly what I need. It even gave me some data to insert into the table so that it's not a blank table. 
I mentioned the Azure OpenAI service. This is if you, as a developer, you want to create your own AI models, ground it in your own data. So there's there's a capability to do that. It's again simple user interface, general purpose text in, text out, but you can tie it to your own data. They call that grounded grounding the AI in your own data. If you hear that word grounded, that's what Microsoft's talking about, using your own data. Another feature I want to introduce you to is GitHub Copilot. So this has been around probably for a while. I've been using it for a while now. Again, it's a fabulous tool to generate code. So it'll it'll recommend, you can chat with it inside of tools like VS uh, Code, or you can, as you're typing your code, you can, in your comments, ask it to do things. So in this example, it's saying, hey, I want to validate each address with an API, uh, and I'll, I'm looking at a list of emails. The, GitHub Copilot will look at my comment and then respond with the proper function. And this is Python. So it, we've seen SQL, we've seen Python, it can do JavaScript. It's really amazing how helpful this uh, uh, makes you when you're trying to build applications. You may have heard that there's Copilots for everyone. Microsoft at Ignite announced Copilot for Windows, Copilot for M365 to do things like uh, generate pre presentation based on uh, an English prompt. There's a great video that describes that. If you're interested, I'll send, I'll put the link out in the chat. You can watch that video that talks about using Word with Copilot and Excel with Copilot to generate automatically uh, analysis. Um, lots of different information out there. It does cost 30 bucks per user per month. There's a little information here about how to license it. So it's not free, but it does uh, use your own data, um, generate charts generate you can summarize teams meetings so it's a really great capability that microsoft has made available another of uh, pro product in the ai platform is power bi so this is my favorite because i can't stand doing dax dax and the i use dax studio and all that but what i really like to do here is to just tell it what i want so here you can see i'm saying rolling 10 done uh, you know i'm doing a power bi report and i need the 10-day average of inspections Rather than write the DAX, I'll use AI to recommend a suggested measure. And that's what exactly it can do for me. So, oh my gosh, talk about making me more productive. Otherwise, it'd have to be, you know, looking it up in Bing, trying to figure out what's the right uh, syntax for the average X. You know, if I even remember that average X is the right formula, this just, you know, it's so helpful to just be able to say what I want and then have AI generate the DAX for me. I mentioned it's also available in Power Apps and Power Automate. So in Power Automate, you can build a flow with your own words. You can say something like, send me a message on Teams every time a new file is added to SharePoint, and it will generate uh, a, a recommended flow. So let's do that. We'll come in here to Power Automate. We'll say we want to, uh, this is our, this is the data, right? We want to bring in some data. So we've got an Excel spreadsheet, and we want to bring some data in. This is what we've been waiting for. Let's go ahead. And, uh, and there's a couple of different ways we could do this, right? We could, again, just bring in the Excel spreadsheet and it will look at that Excel spreadsheet and, and figure out the data schema. So here I've got a flooring estimates Excel spreadsheet. So it's going to use AI to analyze, not just, oh, here's the rows and here's the columns, but what are the data types of those columns, right? So it knows if it's a number or if it's text. Um, let me actually show you the Excel spreadsheet what it looks like before, and then I'll show you the after. So the Excel spreadsheet before, again, it's, it's you know, there's an overview, which is a bunch of uh, long text. There's a contact, there's an image, there's a price and all that. So when I pull that into uh, Power Automate using AI, notice it recognizes the names. Look, the price is a, is a currency, the image is, in, is a link. Uh, the email is, is what was um, recognized as an email address. So the AI is really smart enough to take um, that data and pull it in and, and represent it uh, properly. So if that's not worth the price of admission, I don't know what is. It, it you know it saved me all that retyping, all that um, extra effort to to. And you can make your own changes. If I decided that this doesn't need to be, need to be a single line of text, if I need to use some of the, an, the the advanced options, I can go in and make changes if I want. To wrap it up, not only did it generate the table for me, but I can use the AI to go ahead and create the app for me. So wait, what? I can then say, hey, you, I brought this table in from Excel, used AI to generate a proper dataverse table with proper uh, data types. Now I want to take a step further and generate an app around that data, a Power Apps app. And that's exactly what it's doing here. So it's coming through here and we'll, we'll speed through it just a little bit. 
and it's going to generate that app in Power App. So I've never, you know, this is brand new at just from an Excel table. After it recognized the data types and put it in Dataverse, it's now generating the Power App form with with a gallery, with everything else that we need to to be able to run this what we call a create read update delete app it fully supports all the uh, database operations you would expect to so i can go ahead and preview the app and this is the data that was in my excel spreadsheet that now lives in dataverse and i can do things like you know scroll through the data update the data delete data add new data amazing all right i mentioned that you can describe flows so if i want to describe a flow again using english you can say hey when someone posts a message to a team's channel send me an email it generates that uh, I mentioned there's lots more resources on Microsoft's Learn. You can sign up for a Power Apps community plan to get your own free uh, environment in your company's uh, Office 365. You can sign up for your own developer Microsoft.com program, your own tenant, all, you know, apart from work, apart from everything else. I recommend everyone do this. It's a free uh, resource that you can take advantage of. There's all sorts of other things from Microsoft, like 30 Days to Learn It, where you can, you can take a cloud challenge and get access to a free or half off a Microsoft exam. Um, and that's what this talks about. If you go and you complete a bunch of Microsoft Learn, you get 50% off each exam. They mentioned before the generative AI on GitHub, a great resource, work through 12, uh, 12 lessons. Lots of other free resources. I'll throw some of these in the chat so you guys can have access to them. The last thing I want to leave you with is Azure for Students. So if you haven't done this, go out to aka.ms slash Azure for Students. You can get $100 credit for 12 months, no credit card required, plus access to a bunch of the free resources that I just showed you. So hopefully you got a couple of tidbits out of that. I really appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. If you have questions, you can find me on uh, Twitter at David E. Patrick. Thanks. Thank you so much, David. I have a question for you. Uh, how do you prep your students for the next phase of AI? So I, I make them sign up for Azure for students so they have access to all the resources on Azure. I'm a big believer in hands-on. They have to do it to understand it. Because I can lecture all day and say, this is how this works and this is how that works. But until they do it, until they try it themselves, that's when the light bulb goes off and they go, oh, you mean I got to create this and then I can use that. I create a language, then I can use the language. Oh, I got to train them and then I got to deploy it. So when they walk through the steps, that's when they it really starts to gel for them. So I, I make them sign up for the free resources and then I make them do the labs. Thank you so much. I wanted to highlight that some of your students are watching, uh, including Tori, Seth, Alisa, Toyin, and uh, Sami. They're all saying hi. Hey guys, thanks for coming. <laughs> okay, David, uh, thank you so much for being here with us. That was a nice session. Thanks again, appreciate it. Everyone go out there to aka.ms slash Azure students and sign up if you haven't already.